I'm Kelly Harrell, author, modern animist, and creator of The Weekly Rune. Soul Intent Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, animism, soul-tending, and how each of those intersects through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a rune cast that I've done for years focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. You can find the archive of all of the rune casts on my site, soulintentarts.com, and if you're not sure what a half-month is, listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune at Soul Intent Arts. It's explained at the beginning of every rune cast. I know we have another week plus with Soilu, so my endeavor to discuss wrapping up the second et may seem a bit premature. However, I have the feeling that pressing into the third et and what the actual casts of the next two weeks are will be prescient. So I want to make sure that we talk about how we make this transition from the second to the third et now. I feel like I'm giving a newscast. As you reflect on going into closing the second et, which is in the next week-ish, look back on what was going on in your life as we closed the first. So that would be mid-October. What life dynamics were playing out then? How have they progressed? And what's happening in your life now that's related to the events of that time frame? In the Patreon version of this week's weekly runecast, I walked through each of the second ant runes and talked about how they led us right where we are now, how we responded to them and worked with them led to right now. So with that in mind, what do we take from that experience and prepare for the third et? We talked earlier in the year about how the first et is focused on internalizing the keys of being a fit spirit in form, which really, if you just break it down, means how we manifest ourselves. And if we grok that, if, if we get that we are spirits in form and we're constantly, continuously applying choice and assessment and skills in terms of how we manifest ourselves. It affects how we manifest everything else in our lives. The second et comes along and teaches us how to manage the circumstances of our lives, the ones we have control over and the ones we don't. It tells us to get coping skills, to learn and assess our needs, to set boundaries and honor the boundaries of others. It tells us what happens when we do none of those things as well. And for the things that we've got in the bag, like the stuff that we just nail, we know how to do it, or we have some ridiculously native finesse for knowing how to do stuff, the things that we assume come so naturally well to us that we don't need to refine any skills Like, we just got it. It shows us front and center how important it is that we not rest on such laurels ever. And we can manage that balance, the balance of what we know, the balance of what we don't know, and how to figure out how to cope with all of that. We can manage the balance of it without being a raving lunatic. So what would learning how to manifest yourself then learning to cope with all the dynamics around manifesting yourself lead to. Why would you do that? Why would you put yourself through all that shit? In short, eldering, elderhood. It leads to making the hard decisions around picking your battles. This is our introduction to the third et. And then it moves into fostering and birthing your sacred seed, your calling, realizing the implications of living your calling. And of course, doing all of that while still picking your battles and the delicate places where calling is your battle. 
the third act leads to realizing that if all of this goes well, you will be a fit ancestor, right? It, it's about our mortality. So, so ideally, the third et leads to this point of recognition that you did something with your life. Like you, you did something with yourself, with your experiences. All of this awareness, this soulfulness of the first et, being the spirit in form, and then learning the lessons of being in form in the second et that you take the wisdom of that lived journey and give it back to your community, to your descendants, and that you accept the mortality of elderhood in its physical understanding and its transpersonal responsibility in its spiritual evolution. This is the stuff of the third et and why everyone stumbles in the second et. The second debt is terribly uncomfortable, and it's usually the one that people express the most distress about when it comes up in readings. And that means that the third debt is some shit to be ready for, and culturally, we still haven't gotten there. Collectively, as a culture in the West, we haven't mastered the third debt challenges, and our lack of doing so has affected other cultures around the world from reaching that grounding or from sustaining when they had it in the beginning. So if your culture hasn't been able to establish and sustain mature fit protocol and support for you as an individual to become an animistic elder, how much do you think it's going to support you moving through the third et over the next few months? I'm here. Hit me up. Let's talk about it. I'm right there with you. That's it for this episode. If you have questions or insights about working the runes in season, or you just need a cheerleader, feel free to email me at kelly at solentonarts.com. Or you can call in through the Anchor app, which is how I record What in the Weird. And you can download Anchor on Android or iPhone. Also, check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and all those other platforms for podcasts. If you get a chance, check out Everyday Animism, which I co-host with a couple of other lovely ladies, Brandis Schnabel and Janet Roper, which is also on Anchor. And other podcasts you may enjoy are Around Grandfather Fire, hosted by James Stovall and Sarenth Odinson, and Why Shamanism Now, hosted by Christina Pratt. You can learn more about me and my work by visiting solentonarts.com, and I'm most active on social media at Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird.